It's a very interesting question. I think the answer to me somewhat curiously is no. That is, there are very large numbers of books about how you write scientific papers or how you write or how you arrange grammar and things of that sort. I've never found a single one of them that was useful. But the sort of very simplest idea of most scientific papers are written according to a template. Here's what the template looks like. You make an outline, here's the function of an outline, you fill in the outline, and then you've got a paper. Uh, is not a very difficult and complicated concept. And I think that as viewing a paper as a way of managing a research project rather than as a way of advertising the group, that function is going to persist. You need to find ways of organizing your research, and a paper is a really, really good way of doing that. And then at the end, you get the paper written, all the details are there, you've done the science, you're sure it's right, you've checked the standard deviations on the points, you've you know, done all the stuff that you're supposed to do, you've checked the references. Then if you look at it and you say, well, this is really neat and there's something here which is out of the ordinary, then you can think about moving on to other audiences and, and other media. But that fundamental point of, look, guys, you're doing research, what you're trying to do is to solve the problem. What is the problem? Why are you trying to solve it? How are you solving it? What have you done? Who cares? Just answering that set of very systematic points will always be there. I don't, I don't think that's going to change regardless of the media. That's the machinery of doing things. So that's, that's a paper as a method of organizing research and helping you to spend your time efficiently as opposed to the paper as marketing or the paper as opposed to high school outreach or the paper as opposed to a YouTube video or all these other things that are interesting to do. Let me talk about Strunk and White just briefly. There are, to me, two parts of, three parts of writing a paper. You have to do the science. I mean, that's obviously sine qua non. You have to organize the science, and that's an outline. And then you have to get the, the words right. And everything that anyone wants to know is in Strunk and White. No one seems to read Strunk and White. And in fact, I hand Strunk and White out to students in the group, and I know perfectly well they don't read Strunk and White. And so over and over again, we have these endless um, discussions of the difference between which and that and whether you can use however as a conjunction at the beginning of a sentence and you know all this kind of stuff and it just takes a lot of time again it would be useful to take you know to have somewhere the 30 most common errors in English grammar and to somehow have a little card that could be handed out to everyone that covered this I think that Strunk and White, although it's only this long, is still too long. It, you know, it's, it's got too much stuff in it. It is for a higher level of expertise. What one wants is a kind of simple version of English, as clear as you can make it, as short as you can make it, organized transparently and written flawlessly, grammatically, using simple English words. And then if you want to go beyond that and write War and Peace, terrific.